Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Modern and Modest with myself, Lushina Ghani. Well, we are now reaching the holiday season and we all are looking at quick, easy meals to prepare that yet taste great. So here on Modern and Modest, we always bring you the best and with us today, we have homemade cuisine. So with us, we have Salma and Shabnam. Assalamu alaikum Salma and welcome to Modern and Modest. It is indeed a pleasure having your team with us today and uh, we look forward to you sharing some tips and ideas of how we could prep our meals and yet enjoy, um, enjoy our meals. You know, with the holiday season coming up, we're looking at something that's quick and our kids are at home and we're having to stock up more on our fridges and have ready meals prepared. So hopefully you can share some tips and ideas with our viewers. So before we get going with homemade cuisine, um, maybe you can tell us more about yourself, where you're based and uh, maybe how it all came about for you. Thank you for having us on your show, Moshina. We are very honored to actually be on here. We are both from Durban, uh, moms of uh, three kids and two kids. Um, we are basically moms and we love to cook. We, we're in the kitchen most of the time with our kids and stuff. And we also have our jobs with our parents. We in a family business that's based in Berlin. Uh, Salma is very involved in uh, quality control and food safety. And I'm in the finance sector, finance part of our business. Um, we are manufacturers of icing sugar and caster sugar as well. And um, homemade cuisine came about with actually inspiration from my father, to be quite honest with you. Uh, he asked us to try something different and venture out a bit and uh, sitting in a boardroom we had a bit of discussion and we brainstormed and we thought this is the best opportunity for us. Okay so you have a busy day with uh, both of you having to be involved in a family business and I'm not surprised that you chose to go into home industry seeing that you are manufacturers of icing sugar and pasta sugar. So just give us some uh, background with how did it actually all come about? I know your dad uh, inspired you on, on getting into something different and venturing out, but when did this actually turn into a fully fledged business? Okay, we have been cooking for our families quite often for all our functions and um, events that have been happening at home. And a lot of our family says, you know what, you guys, food is really nice. Uh, why don't you try doing something else? Go, go out and let people actually taste your food. And we didn't actually consider it for a long time up until this year, March. And uh, my dad said, you know what, try and let's see if this is going to work out for you. And um, yeah, through my parents' support and uh, giving us the support, we have decided to venture out and take our cuisine to the public, I suppose. Okay, great. So just tell us a little bit more about uh, homemade cuisine. I mean, it's, it's great that we could get to enjoy meals that are homemade and not necessarily uh, prepared in bulk or mass production. So we're getting that quality and the taste of having a home-cooked meal. Mm -hmm. But take us through your menu offering. What, what types of meals do you offer? Is it a, is a homemade meal? Is it savory? Is it dessert? There's just so much that comes to food. Yes, we actually offer the curries, which is one of our specialities. Um, savouries we do as well for your parties and your birthdays and stuff like that, and you offer corporate events. Our desserts as well, very, very popular. Um, in terms of what's more offered more to people will be the curries, and our we're actually diverse. We, we do pastas as well and your grills, and, and um, because we're in a white area, we try to diversify not just curries, so um, I would say our cuisine is quite uh, diverse in that, in that way. And everything is done by Salma and I. We do everything from the start to the end. So, so when you say, so in actual fact, you specialize in your traditional, shall we say the traditional in Durban Indian. curry, because yes. Durban is known for curry and spices and flavors. Mm -hmm. So um, when you say it's just teamwork, just the two of you that prepare it. So how, with just the two of you preparing these meals, how many people can you actually cater for? Okay, the maximum amount that we've catered for thus far has been 50 people. We actually did a, an event recently, it was a school reunion and we had quite a few people there. Uh, it was mostly our savouries and uh, we had laid out everything for them and it was actually very well received. So if you had to cater an event, you'd be able to provide the starter, which would be the savory, your main meal, right to the end with your dessert option as well. 
Alright. And then, um, do you plan on expanding homemade cuisine, or would you like to just limit it to catering fresh meals just for a selected amount? Seeing that you are just a, a two team, where do you um, see this going for you? Uh, in terms of expansion, we would love to expand, but we would like to keep the element of being homemade uh, still as our core business. Mm -hmm. The minute you branch out, you know, you lose that authenticity of homemade, authenticity of homemade cuisine. And uh, we very much just like to be on our own space. Um, we're very uh, equipped to deal with each other and our different um, personalities, I would say. Yeah, so uh, bringing other people into the mix might just complicate things for us mm. at the moment. Okay, so we're up to you. We know that uh, Shopkin chatted about wanting to maintain that authentic dish and keep it uh, homemade. A lot of time goes into flavor and preparation. Let's speak about um, the ingredients that go into your meals. Do you select that yourself? Do you go out and shop for your veggies or your your type your, your grading of your meat? Who does that between you and Shopkin? Okay, uh, I generally do that. Um, majority of our spices are all homemade. We buy the, the raw ingredients, we roast it and grind it down. And, and even to our chili powder, we grind it ourselves. So everything is literally homemade. With regards to our fruit and vegetables, we love to go to the market. We purchase most of our ingredients from the market. And um, certain things we do grow in our garden, okay. like our mint, our dania, chilies. We love it fresh, so the aroma in the curry is fresh. So pretty much organic? Organic, if you could say. So if I had to place an order with you, or your client had to place an order with you, what is the timeline you're looking at? Because you obviously need to prep what you're going to be preparing. Right. Um, so what is the timeline on placing an order? From start to end, what, what are we looking at? Okay, with our finger foods, we do like to take a minimum of four days uh, ahead of time to start preparing and purchasing. We don't keep any uh, frozen stuff in our freezers. Like, you know, if you tell me, like, I need something tomorrow, I'm going to tell you, no, I cannot help you because we literally make it per order. There's nothing okay. frozen and kept with regards so to our meat as well. So your and your finger foods are all freshly all prepared? freshly produced. We probably will put it the night before in the freezer. Sure. And that's it. Okay. And for your meals as such, your curries that okay. you specialize in? Uh, the curries we do the night before. We have a daily menu that goes out on a Sunday for the whole week. So what our customers would do now, from our picture, they just ring what they would like to order. So with that now, we just know, okay, we've got to cater for 30 meals or 40 meals for the day. For the day. And by 9 o'clock the night before, most of our orders are confirmed. So we start prepping from 4 o'clock in the morning to have our food ready by lunchtime. All right. So with now being end of year, I'm sure your team is very busy because people are looking at year end functions yes. and uh, you know people are tired of maybe going out to restaurants. Mm -hmm. Many people tend to order in and have it at the offices and get to enjoy that authentic mm -hmm. uh, homemade meal. So just take us back to you being um, working. You have a full day, and I believe you're a mom of three. Yes. Take us into your day now. Give us a bit about how does your day start and end, and how do you fit in homemade cuisine having so much on your feet? Okay. Uh, certain days, our day starts from 4 o'clock in the morning. We'll be busy chopping <laughs> and cutting and getting everything ready for us to cook. Uh, at 6 o'clock, we stop because from 6 o'clock to 7 is our kids' time, getting them ready for school and taking them to school. We have to work at AJ Products at 8 o'clock. We work till 11, uh, flexi hours. Uh, we head off to homemade cuisine where we start cooking our food. And by lunchtime, we're done uh, with the cooking and, and stuff like that. So by 3 o'clock, most of our customers come and fetch their food. So from Three till about six o'clock it's like our family time with our supper and things and it depends now if we have like uh, savories or we got to make savories then sometimes our day stretches right down to nine o'clock in the evening sure. that's a yeah. full full-on day so back to you Shabnam someone mentioned that you both start at 4 a.m do you live together or how do you work together at 4 in the morning 
Well, actually, I am all the way in the beach drive. So <laughs> I had to get into my car and then drive to Salma at about 4 o'clock in the morning. Exactly. And then our day obviously starts at mm. about half past 4 with yeah. prepping. We just about have time to give ourselves a bit of a tea break before we actually get rolling with our food. But uh, it does take up a lot of our time. It's a lot of, uh, lot of hard work. A lot of hard work yeah. goes into the preparation. And uh, obviously, because we are trying to keep everything real and organic, it's all fresh. Everything's freshly done in the morning. So there's quite a bit of dedication and passion that goes into homemade cuisine to up and out at 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Definitely. Right. And uh, how many kids do you have? Bashan? I've got two. two and kids. How, how does your family cope with you being such a busy mom from 4 a.m.? Well, luckily for me, uh, because we're such a family orientated uh, unit, uh, our kids are always spending time together. They in fact go to the same schools and stuff. So our day is kind of intertwined with each other in terms of traveling arrangements. Mm -hmm. So one week will be Salma, one week will be me. The kids, you know, they, they understand that we're trying to make a business and, we, and, and they give us the time. But okay. in fact, we also make time for them. Like on a Sunday, we're totally dedicated to our children. This is why homemade cuisine only runs from for cooking for people on a Monday to Friday. We only cater special events on a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah, which is great because you say you you are prioritizing your time. You know, yes. you know, during the week you dedicating it to your work, and of course on the weekends your family time is of mm. utmost importance. Yes. Uh, importance. So we're going to take an ad break and when back, uh, Soma, you can chat to us more about um, being the December period and just some tips on quick meals that we can prep for our kids. I mean, you being a mom of three, you should know that they always in and out of the kitchen, and we've got to have these ready meals prepped. So after the ad break, we'll be chatting more to Salma from Homemade Cuisine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Modern and Modest. And with me today, we have Homemade Cuisine and we'll be chatting to Salma. So Salma, just before our ad break, we were talking about it being the holiday season and all mums have kiddies at home. And to be quite honest with you, I think mums need a break as well. We've been cooking for 11 months of the year and I think for, at the end, the last month that's left, we want to be able to take a break. But how do we do this? Because with kids at home, we still need to prepare meals. But what can you suggest that would be quick where we're spending less time and we're not prepping as much? So I leave that to you being the expert. Okay. okay, with the quick and easy meals and with kids, pasta goes a long way. Mac and cheese, flavor it up with whatever spices you like. Uh, chicken spice is wonderful. Aromat, even just throw in a dash of mixed herbs, gives it a whole different flavor. Uh, also, with kids, uh, we like to make those fancy uh, shapes of sandwiches, burgers, very quick. So you're coming back from the beach, quickly just pop it in your air fryer or your frying pan of that sort and you've got a home cooked meal. Obviously, your burgers can be homemade, you know, get nutrition, proper meat in those burgers. Mm -hmm. Store-bought wine is a bit dicey, so we like to make our homemade ones. So how would we go about making a homemade patty? Okay, with the homemade patty, you've got ground meat in there, that's your mints, mm -hmm. ginger and garlic, a few spices with mixed herbs and um, uh, chili powder if you like, okay. mixed masala. And for those fussy eaters with the vegetables, throw in some veggies in there, kids won't even know that there's okay. veggies in your, your patty. Okay. So it's pretty much your uh, meatball or your kebab uh, yeah. recipe that you Typical. just turn it into a little uh, uh, mini burger, burger and you flatten it. You pop that in the oven or can you grill it on the stove? You can even grill it on the stove. Okay. Mm -hmm. You chatted now about sandwiches which would be ideal for, for our climate because we don't want yes. to have heavy meals. Give us some sandwich ideas. Okay. You have uh, your basics which is uh, chicken and mayo, tuna and mayo, a simple uh, cheese with tomato and lettuce is very refreshing uh, as much as it seems so simple but mm -hmm. when you actually like hot and plus it those sandwiches actually cool you down okay so someone let's chat about you raised something very important where kids tend to be fussy eaters yes. and we find that there's far more junk food options available as opposed to healthy options so how do we reintroduce veggies to our kids how can we get veggies to be fun and tasty for them to enjoy okay uh, i like to play this game with my kids where we blindfold them mm -hmm. and we plate up a whole lot of veggies for them and uh, 
with blindfold, they don't know what they're eating. Even sometimes we just cover the nose so you don't get the broccoli smell. <laughs> okay. So yeah, and you go from there and you see what your kids like to eat. Without them seeing it, if they could take a liking to it. And obviously, uh, like our moms did, hide them. <laughs> hide them in your soup, uh, in your savouries, your, your sweet corn and cheese savoury. You can put in a bits of carrots in there, celery, parsley, okay. wonderful idea. All right. So, whilst we're on the topic of kids and holiday meals, we know that the new school year would be on our doorstep and time goes by very quickly. What snack ideas can you give us? Um, you know, it's always a, an issue for mums every day. It's not, what you, it's not about preparing it, it's always about what am I going to be packing. And you want to be able to create that variety for your kids because they tend to get bored of eating the same types of foods every day. So what snack ideas can you uh, uh, offer? Fruit kebabs are a good idea. Fruit okay. kebabs, those who don't like fruits, cut them up and just put them on the stick. Even with your veggies, with a little bit of cheese, All right. that would be a good snack idea. And any uh, healthy savouries? I know savouries don't always have to be fried, but yes. it's because kids tend to love finger foods and savouries. What, what ideas do you have? Um, if you have an air fryer, most of uh, the savouries do go in air fryers. So that would be your healthy option. With the regards to ovens and putting your savouries in ovens, they do tend to get a bit tough and, and uh, hard mm -hmm. so yeah that would be the only way to and is there it. any savory ideas or finger food ideas that you could put forward for our viewers okay uh, we're going to be demonstrating one <laughs> that we'd like to show our viewers uh, it's called rizzolis many people know it as mousse uh, basically you can put anything in there and it tastes good so uh, Shabnam back to you now we we've chatted a lot about your traditional curries that you specialize in i want to know more about your savories and your finger foods do you prepare the traditional savories that we know like your samosas and your kebabs and so forth or is there any anything different that you've put forward on your savory menu in terms of our savories uh, it is very basic and the simple ones that people actually know we do try to introduce new stuff into mm -hmm. our menus but it all depends on the people and the palate that they that they sure. you want to satisfy. Um, in terms of Indian people, they love savouries. They mm. love our Indian savouries, our samosas, our rosolis. Um, so we stick stick to the basics with them. When it comes to our white clientele, they want a little bit more uh, eccentric and a bit more different uh, in terms of spices. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tried something different recently with the baguette with a little bit of tomato and cheese and stuff on it with the uh, balsamic vinegar actually very tasty. Uh, we tried it with our Indian uh, the clientele. Uh, it didn't take very well because I think Indian people don't want to really see tomato and onion okay. really. Right. But um, the white people generally actually like this type of food. Um, they also love our risolis and our Indian food because okay. where else do you get good Indian food from Indian people? Sure. So, so our white clientele generally also like our samosas and that type of thing. Okay. The reason I chatted to you, um, my question about savouries, because with the holiday season now, many of us want to tap up on savouries mm. because you get unexpected guests that come home or you just want something very quick that's in and out of the oven and mm. you could still have, you know, use it as your finger food mm. and so forth. But we also know that especially here in Durban, um, people tend to bry quite a bit mm. over the holiday season. So what can you suggest would um, partner well when you're doing your traditional braai? Maybe some people may opt for a seafood braai. What can we put together with that? Uh, well, salads are very important. Mm -hmm. um, the potato salad, your basic potato salad with a bit of egg in it. Um, your green salad, actually very nice. It all depends on the flavoring that you're putting inside a salad. Okay. You know, color is very important. You generally eat with your eyes first. Sure. So introduce a lot of other things like we put strawberries in our salads, in our green salads, mm -hmm. uh, orange, oranges as well. So it just it makes it look very appetizing, and even the kids seem to take a liking mm -hmm. to it because they're seeing color and they're yeah. seeing those uh, fruit and stuff which they generally like. And I'm sure it also enhances this, uh, the flavor as well, putting the greens and a bit of the fruit together. You chatted about potato salad, and we know a traditional potato salad would be your your potatoes with your mayo. Are there any other variants that we could add to that potato salad? Uh, well, we also do a tangy one, which is basically added more spice into it. Mm -hmm. 
a little bit of chili powder or paprika. Okay. Uh, gives it a lot of flavor. The cayenne pepper also adds a bit more of a bite to the palate. Uh, we also put in celery to give it a bit of a green, green okay. look to it. Okay. And yeah, that's basically. So you, there is quite a bit that you can do with just your basic potato salad. Yes. And if you are deciding to do a seafood braai, we know that salads go with whichever braai you're putting together. But what would you partner with a seafood braai? Um, in terms of salads, I would say the green salad would be the better option. Okay. Uh, generally, we serve our, our you serve your braai generally with garlic bread mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So you don't want to have something too mushy also to add to your sure. your your seafood. And you want to get the taste of obviously whatever seafood you're eating, so you don't mix it with too many other flavors. So I would say the green salad is the better option with our seafood uh, rice. Okay. So Salma, we know that you you specialize in your traditional Durban curries. You believe in fresh produce from your veggies being organic to preparing the meals the day before, and we know that you you or you offer quite a range of savories. But having the background of manufacturing I say sugar and pasta sugar do you have any baked goodies that you offer on on your menu for homemade cooking uh, to tell you the truth <laughs> we are not into baking all right but we do the the cupcakes we do cupcakes we do uh, brownies we do muffins things like that but not into those intricate cakes and uh, you know yeah so just the basic stuff that we, we cater for. But we also find that the basic, uh, the basic options are the safer options. Safe. And uh, I think it's, it's more edible, you know, like yes. your simple breakfast muffin or your cupcakes and your chocolate brownies. Do you find that people order these together with their meal? Yes, they do. They and do. your cupcakes, do you ha offer them in variants or is it just your basic vanilla cupcake? Uh, no, we do offer them in variants. We have chocolate. Uh, vanilla. We're trying to infuse flavors in them right now. Mm -hmm. So you get a peppermint cupcake, strawberry cupcake, almond cupcake. And your muffins, uh, Shabnam, are those your traditional breakfast muffins or are they more your chuck chuck blueberry muffins? In fact, we do all types of muffins. It all depends on what the customer wants and uh, it depends a bit for a party, uh, for a kid's party. Then yes, they do want a bit of a chocolate chip and with a lot of icing obviously because yeah. kids want to yes. have all the icing on it. Okay. So we do uh, any type of uh, cupcake depending on what the client wants. So if you wanted to have a healthy option like your fruit and bran muffins, do you offer those as well? We do, we do that as well as the carrot muffin. Okay. So it's actually very tasty. We do put a bit of uh, icing on the top like a glaze, but uh, we try to keep it quite um, healthy. Okay. We don't want to put a lot of sugar on it and sure. people being diabetic and stuff, so we yeah. try to keep it uh, flavorful. Okay. We'll, we'll be breaking for our next ad break and then when I get back I want to, us to discuss more about the desserts that you offer. Um, I think uh, a meal is never complete without having that dessert. So we'll take an ad break and when back we'll be chatting more to Shabnam from Homemade Cuisine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Modern and Modest and with me we have Homemade Cuisine Salma and Shabnam based here in Durban. So Shabnam, off to you. We, we spoke about everything that you you guys specialize in from the traditional Durban curry to the savories and we touched a bit on baking but we know these meals are not complete without having that end bit of the dessert so mm. let's talk about desserts do you have desserts on your menu offering? yes we do we, we actually specialize in uh, a lot of sweet meats as well as your cold desserts and your warm desserts depending on the day um, our cold desserts are quite a variety actually we do a strawberry dessert we do peppermint dessert, we do uh, tiramisu, uh, we've got mousse also on our dessert uh, list. Um, recently we started off with our sweet meats and that's actually been quite a hit with the... Uh, so, so with your sweet meats, is it like your barfi, your, what, what, what do you offer, the full barfi, chana magaj, what, what, what else do you offer on your sweet okay. meats? Okay, it's not the traditional barfi, but we do that as well depending on what the customer wants. But we also do the barfi truffle. Okay. So we've got quite a few variants in the barfi truffle. Uh, we do a peppermint infused, we do an almond infused, uh, a saffron infused as well. So very flavorful. Interesting. Uh, and then we uh, coat it with chocolate and uh, obviously all our lovely decorations that go on the top of it. So yeah. 
And what are the, uh, apart from barfi, do you offer your traditional, like people are used to having um, the chana magaj and they have the soji ladu and then they have the, I don't know what the yellow one is called. Mm -hmm. um, but those are traditional Indian sweetmeats. Do you offer all of that on your menu? We do. We've actually done now for our Diwali period, we've, we've done uh, gulab jam, we've done uh, Chana Magaj, we've done um, Ladu, which is one of our also quite so popular. So which one? I know you get the, we, we the yellow the one and then you get the other we, we, one. We do the orange one with the, oh, with right. the topping of almond and stuff okay. like that. So right. we've actually done quite a bit of uh, sweet meats uh, and quite uh, it's actually taken off quite well. A lot of people were quite happy and quite impressed with our sweet meats. And like I said, we do it together. So mm. everything is done by us, by our own hands. And we put a lot of effort and, and I'm sure. passion into it <laughs> to get it to look perfect for the customer. So your infused barfi sounds rather interesting. So are these individual pieces that you prepare that's infused and then you coat them in chocolate? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so it actually passes as a dessert. Uh, like I know mm. you get these those kisses that are chocolate with ice yes. cream, but this is just mm. with the barfi centre in it. Yeah. Let's chat about your cold desserts being summer now. What are your cold dessert offerings and what would you recommend people order for you? Okay, our strawberry dessert is quite popular. Um, you know, with kids, they, they love to eat fruits. So mm. we actually put fresh fruits into our, into our strawberry dessert. So a lot of strawberries. Uh, we've got a pineapple snow as well, which we do as well, which is cut pieces of pineapple. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of uh, desserts with a lot of fruit in it. Which is nice because in summer you get mm. some of the best fruits yes. that's available. Okay. And your warmer desserts would be more winter or do you find people tend to opt for that in summer as well? Well, we offer our summer desserts would be our soji. And when it's, we do have the occasional uh, coldish day in the mm. summer. Then we offer bread pudding and malva pudding and stuff like that, which people actually do enjoy. Those are your more common uh, warmer desserts. And we try to stick to the basics because we don't want to introduce things that people might be reluctant to try. Sure. So we just try to keep it basic for everyone so they know what they're kind of getting. And we stick to the core recipe. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to your desserts, do you... Uh, prepare them as uh, a dessert that could perhaps serve four to six people or do you prepare individual mini desserts? We actually do both. Okay. It all depends on the type of uh, gathering you're having. Uh, some people like the individual desserts when it comes to like weddings and uh, mainies and functions. Mm -hmm. But when you're having a normal get together at home, they do want a bit of a bigger quantity yeah. and uh, then they go for the, up for the, the, the bigger bowl. Okay. Do you find that your sweet meats are seasonal or do you find that people actually order it throughout the year? Actually throughout the year <laughs> okay. because uh, us Indian people we love to have nice things on our table especially mm. for our teas and stuff. Gulab jam is a typical favorite for people. Yeah. Okay. Not too sweet, not too rich, it's just perfect for the, downing your tea and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So with what is, I know we, we chatted about meals you need a four days. Uh, notice period before you take it on order but uh, sweet meat obviously there's a lot of work that goes into it so what's your timeline okay we need a week for our sweet meats uh, right. because we, we, we it becomes very intricate in terms of our detail on our, our barfi and our chana marriage we do take the time to you know to actually put a lot of effort into that and present it well um, and it depends also on the amount of um, quantity that the people want. Obviously, we cannot do a, a, a six kilo order in a space of a few days. Sure. So uh, we do need about a week to prepare our, our food. Let's talk about your pricing. Now, seeing that you're so selective with your organic ingredients and the fact that you would not compromise on preparing in bulk and taking it out of the freezer, would you say your pricing is on par with what's available or are you a tad bit more because of the fresh produce? We tend to be almost on par. Okay. Um, we do know that people have tight budgets at the moment and we try to keep in line with that. We don't want to be too expensive for the people to be you know, reluctant to buy mm. from us. So even though we do buy top quality products, we still want to give our customers you know, the best out of that money that they're actually giving us. Okay, all right. So who, if you don't mind me asking, I know we've got uh, meals, we've got savory and we've got sweet. So which is the sweet and which is the savory <laughs> between the two of you? Uh, I would say we both do it as a joint effort. Everything we, we, we kind of do together. So while one is chopping onions, the other one's busy preparing the spices and the other one's probably cutting the meat. So everything we do, we do together. 
a, a lot of teamwork here. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about your recipes. Are they recipes that you may have uh, inherited from maybe family back in the day or are they recipes that you two have decided to try, test, maybe put together something new? How do you come up with your recipes? Actually, good question. Uh, a lot of stuff is actually inherited from our family. Um, I've got an auntie in Joburg, she's got a different taste and palate and uh, Salma being from a a different background and I'm being from a different background. Uh, we cook me, so our style of cooking is very different to Salma's uh, a normal uh, Indian. Indian type of food. Okay. So a lot of our recipes actually get handed down uh, from our aunties and our family uh, in Cape Town and Joanna as well. Okay, that's interesting. So you are offering the, the Cape Malay cuisine on your menu as well? Uh, I wouldn't say Cape Malay, it's more, um, I would say the Indian palate, uh, okay. your, your traditional Indian food coming stemming from actually India, to be quite honest with you. And Salma's mom also and her a lot of the Indian cuisine which is predominantly Durban which we all tend to like. Okay. The biryani and the typical biryani. So that's Salma's speciality. <laughs> okay. So tell me, um, you know we spoke about Cape being Indian but we we also know that different regions have a different palate. And I know the Cape Tonians tend to even though it's Indian, they tend to add sugar to their meals. Is that something that you do? <laughs> um, unfortunately, that's not something that the, the Durban people actually like. <laughs> okay. um, I, do, I do know my, my family actually in Cape Town, they do infuse sugar into our, mm. in their rice yes. and then they eat it as with the curry and uh, it gives it a very different flavor. But uh, the people here are not used to that kind of uh, taste, so it uh, doesn't take off very well with them. Have you tried? I, I have personally mm -hmm. tried because I've lived in Cape Town for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my brother, on the other hand, he doesn't seem to like it at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, uh, Salma, back to you. Which would you say is your favorite dessert that you would recommend to our viewers? I would say our Ras Malai. Mm -hmm. It's oh, one of okay. the best. And prep time on that? Uh, prep time is about a day. A day? Yeah, a day. It's and to that obviously you wouldn't do individual or do you do that no, individual no. as we well? No, we do do it individually but generally you'd want it in a fancy bowl because it's emerged in milk. Okay, so you come with quite a bit of the Indian uh, quite traditional a bit. Indian recipe. And then back to you Shabnam, uh, coming from the Cape Town, uh, Cape Townian background, which would you say is a dessert that goes well for you? Um, I would say the cold desserts actually. Our strawberry uh, dessert is actually one of our most Is that what ones. we would be doing on demo today? Yes, that's the one we'll be doing today. Uh, very quick and very simple um, and uh, quick and easy for your moms to prepare at home. Mm. What about quick and easy desserts for kids that you could maybe pop in the freezer and out like maybe your ice lollies or do you offer anything like that on your menu? Um, because we're such a small uh, based company at the moment, freezer space seems to be very limited for us because we try to buy everything on the turn. Okay. And even when we're making stuff, the freezer gets so full all the time, so it becomes very hard for us to actually prepare frozen stuff like that. Okay. So when you take in an order, do you have the option of people just ordering a dessert or savory or do you have packages? that work out more cost effective where you could do the full deal from savory to main meal to dessert. Do you have those packages Our available? Christmas uh, lunch and supper menu is a package where you're getting a meal for four people with the starter and the dessert. And pricing, what are we looking at? Uh, depends on what it is. Uh, you can go to our Facebook account, our Instagram account. Uh, we have the options there. Uh, obviously with our pricing, we tend to mail it personally to you. Sure. Yeah. So would you say that there are set menu options that are set available menu. and then you it, it comes with the starter, the main meal and the dessert and the option? Dessert, yes. Okay, and that's for four people? For four mentioned. people. Okay, Okay. so Salma, we'll take our ad break now and when back, I'd like uh, for you to share with our viewers on your savoury that's so popular and I'm very interested in having a look at what the strawberry dessert mm -hmm. is all about. So please get your pens and uh, notebooks ready so you could take down some recipes from the homemade cuisine and we'll be doing that just after the ad break. Welcome back to Modern and Modest and with us today we have homemade cuisine based here in Durban and we're now to the fun bits of it where we're going to be getting Salma and Shabnam to demo their most popular savory and dessert. So Salma, up to you. Maybe you can start out with what you've 
prepared here and what ingredients do we need to have? Okay, so basically for your rizzoli, uh, you're going to have two cups of flour, two cups of water, a bit of salt and 40 grams of butter. So the method that you would do this now would be to add your two cups of water in, your salt and your butter, let it boil on the stove. As soon as you see it's boiling, you throw in your two cups of flour and then you mix it down to form a dough. So dough, would you add your flour on heat or would you turn the stove, uh, the you'll heat have down? It on, you have it on until it becomes yeah, a bit until of a it dough becomes doughy like this. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay uh, your dough is not going to look like this. It's going to look crummy and, and, and lumpy. lumpy, yes. Okay. So you're going to knead it down like this So you here. obviously wait for it to cool down? Cool. Before no. No, while You've it's hot. You've got to do it while it's hot like right. this. So what I generally do is I just press it with my uh, rolling pin down like this. Okay. And it, that's the trick. Okay, so your dough should look something like this here. And then you just roll it down. So this is whilst it's hot? Yes? Whilst it's hot. Okay. Uh, the reason why we do it while it's hot, uh, your edges don't tend to uh, close up easily when it's too cold like this. Okay. Uh, Shabnam will show you now when she's closing it up. So how thick should your dough be before uh, you start cutting? You need it almost like paper thin. Okay. So you just want to carry on like this and um, roll and, 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 and place get it around. Get your down. circles ready. Yeah, get your circles okay. ready. And our filling is just your chicken, some carrots, bits of carrots, celery, mushrooms, uh, green chilies, salt, pepper, and um, and some chicken spice. So you're filling, you garlic. could decide if you want you a veggie could, option or yeah, a beef option you could, and so forth. Okay. You could use any filling in here. You could use steak, you could use just a vegetarian. We do a soya mince uh, filling right. as well. So you're just going to take like a half a tablespoon of filling. I see your filling into. isn't completely shredded. Eh? No. Okay. And then you're going to close it up like this. We ensure all uh, the corners are pressed tightly as these do tend to burst in the oil when frying. Okay. So that would be your rizzoli. Uh, it's best to do it with two people <laughs> because this can be time consuming oh, really? to close and then to uh, dip, dip in our egg wash and then into the bread crumbs. So that's just your basic um, ready bread crumbs? Ready bread crumbs. Like I said, you can put any filling in there. The kids won't even know. They just go yum and... Okay. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so whilst the dough is still quite warm, your filling has to be pre-cooled cooled. before you fill it in. Yes. And then, do you then fry immediately once you've... Uh, you can fry uh, immediately or you can pop them in the freezer for later. Okay, and I presume it would be deep fried, deep uh, fried. Oil as well. What other variants would you recommend um, that people can go for? Oh, in terms of filling? In terms of filling. Uh, you could do a soya mince filling with just soya mints and your dania okay. and green chilies. You could do a pepper steak, you could do steak and kidney, you could do a chicken, chicken and mushroom, or just chicken, or oh. chicken mints. <laughs> okay. So Zola, with two, you, just to repeat that, we've got two cups of flour. Two cups of flour. We've got two cups of water, we've got some salt, salt. and we've got 40 grams yes. of butter. Yeah. So you, you would uh, heat your water, your salt and your butter and once mm -hmm. it comes to boil you add in your two cups of flour. That's right. You'd whisk it until it forms you into just, a... Uh, you just turn it until it, the spoon. Yeah. Okay, until it forms into until it forms um, a dough. Into. So with two cups, how many um, savouries would you actually yield? Uh, it all depends on how thin you roll out your dough. Okay, yeah. all right. So does that make a difference where if it's too thick, does it mean that your recipe is failed or does it still, is it still okay? No, it's still okay. It's just that your, your uh, pastry is going to be a bit thick. And have you ever considered a sweet filling? No. Do, do people <laughs> ever do anything sweet? We, are, we haven't tried doing a sweet filling. Maybe that's our new uh, option that we could go for. Okay. All right, so that sounds quite quick and easy. Time-wise, yes. how long would it take to prepare uh, this? This should take under an hour. Under okay. an hour. From start to end. Start to end. Okay, all right. So, Shabnam, I'm waiting to have a look at the strawberry dessert you chatted about. Um, maybe you can tell us more about the ingredients and then you can take us through the process.
Okay, Chef Nam, the strawberry dessert we've been waiting for. You can tell our viewers what you have here, what would you need and take us through the prep. Okay, uh, you, need, you need some fresh cream, you need strawberry yogurt, uh, preferably the chunky one with the strawberries in. Okay. You can use the double cream strawberry yogurt, preferably the chunky one. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, condensed milk and uh, your nestle cream and obviously some strawberries for the topping. Uh, first, you'll take your, um, your yogurt, you'll top it into the bowl. Generally, you use the bigger tub if you're having a, a family gathering. Mm -hmm. For now, I'm just going to use the, the smaller one. Um, you'll use about a whole fresh, everything you'll use the whole container. Okay. But for now, I'm just going to use half the recipe. You add the fresh cream in. So it's not your, it's your pouring fresh cream that you would whip until it gets yes. to that consistency. Okay, okay. then you're going to add in your condensed milk. I'm going to add in about half a tin for this recipe okay. and your condensed milk, sorry your nestle cream. Okay, I'm also going to add about half a tin in. Okay. You're going to give it a nice mix so all your ingredients are combined. Mm -hmm. Try and get all the lumps out of the, the nestle cream. It will be a bit of a runny consistency at the, at the start. And then you're going to add in your fresh cut strawberries to your dessert. You can make them a bit smaller. I'll just add in a few. And we've prepared uh, actually a jelly, a strawberry jelly. Uh, we just kind of make it a bit more fancy by tipping it to, to, the, to the side. Okay. And. Um, Basically, you just add your dessert into the bowl. So would you serve the dessert, can you serve it on its own or do you have to serve it with jelly? Uh, you can serve it on its own, in fact. Okay. Um, we're just trying to be a little bit more fancy and make it a bit more attractive for people to eat. So we put it in a fancy bowl and obviously with the jelly on the side. And we can just top it off with a, a nice piece of strawberry at the top. And there you go. And you would obviously serve that chilled. Pop it yes, in your fridge it must go into the fridge. It must chill for a bit. It will get a bit firmer. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't be such a runny consistency. And uh, perfect for your outdoor functions. Okay. So seeing that you've combined strawberries with strawberry yogurt, you can do other variants. You can perhaps do pineapple and you can find maybe a, a vanilla flavored yogurt. So you can chop and change the recipe yes, you when can. required. You can, uh, you can change anything. I mean, when it comes to fruit, you can mix it up a bit and you can get different... Uh, um, obviously, uh, desserts. Options. Okay, so Shabnam, um, that seems like a very quick and easy recipe. But before we wrap up, if our viewers need to get in touch with you, how best can we reach you? Okay, we are on Facebook and we are on Instagram. Uh, preferably, just pop us a message on either either or, and we get back to you via obviously a text. text message. Okay, and what is your Instagram handle? It's homemade underscore cuisine underscore. So cuisine as in Q Z uh, double E N. So that's homemade underscore, underscore cuisine, cuisine underscore underscore. All right. And we just need to bear in mind that we need to place an order a few days before that's we can correct. reach you. Well, thank you so much for being on our show today. We've learned quite a bit about savories and desserts and the quick options. And inshallah, hopefully, we look forward to bringing you back onto Modern and Modest. That was Shabnam and Salma from Homemade Cuisine. I'm sure you've enjoyed the show and noted down their quick and easy recipes. Until next week, from myself, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.